Greetings and welcome back to yet another episode of After a Plus Lua modding tutorials and in today's video I'm going to show you how to save and load custom mod data. So why is this useful for? For example, if you want to track player's progress over the course of multiple runs, you need a way to save that data somewhere, because if you just have it in a variable, like in this case, this variable gets deleted every time you restart the game from memory, so you need to save it on the hard drive, and thankfully there are two functions that allow us to save, both save and load the mod data that we choose to save on the comp on the recipient's computer. In this case we use the function save mod data and the functions load mod data, and they obviously do the corresponding things of what they say they do. And in this case, what I'm going to be doing, I'm, I'm going to be saving how many coins the player has acquired and then just basically keeping that as my mod data. And in this case, if, for example, the player goes on the second floor with five coins, I'm going to save those five coins. And even if they restart the game, I'm going to be showing five coins that they've collected in the previous run. And essentially what this mod does is every time you go on the next floor, it's going to save how many coins you've had, and then the render function is just going to so show the last saved data. So when I actually go to the code, I hope that it will make a bit more sense than when I actually show it in game. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I do is I just register the mod, this is the same like we've always done before, and the next thing is debug text. In this case, debug text is just going to be used to show the last saved state, so how many coins we had when we switched floors. And then you can see that we have three functions and two of them are tied to the mod variable. So we created them right inside of it. And this third function is just slow data. And this is very important because save data is tied to the MC post curse evaluation. And you might be wondering that that's a bit weird. Why are we tying the save data to the MC post curse evaluation? And essentially what is happening, this post curse evaluation, whenever a curse evaluation happens, so if any curses will be applied, this happens after this callback is done or rather this callback is triggered after the curses have been evaluated as the name suggests, then this particular function will save the data. And because this only happens every single floor, we're not saving the data every single frame. So for example, we had MC post update, what would happen is that this function would trigger every single frame and we would be accessing the game state every single frame and accessing the hard drive. And that's not something that you want to do because saving things to the hard drive is actually a very taxing and slow operation. So having a way to actually circumvent that and apply it maybe every floor or maybe every time you pick up a coin or maybe every time you fight a boss or something like that is a good idea to go about things because just saving data to the, like I said, to the hard drive is not something you want to do every single frame. So in this function, what you can see is that because it's kind of a cheaty way, we get the parameter curses, which indicates how many curses we have. And if you want to check those out and see what it means, you can go to how to add curses video. And at the end, what we have to do is just return the curses. If you don't return anything, I believe what will happen is that we just won't have curses anymore. So not to break the game and just maybe make any alterations we don't, don't want to make, you have to keep the return curses at the end here. And of course, this is just us saving the data that I'm going to be talking about in just a second. Then we have the load data function, which is, you can see, is not tied to the mod. And what this does essentially is just loads the data that we've saved and saves it to the debug text. And then every single render frame, because the function render data is tied to MC post render, we're just going to render whatever's in the debug text. And of course, what's going to happen, because we're rendering whatever in the debug text, um, we're just gonna show how many coins we've had when we actually switch floors. And this should persist even when we exit the game and come back in again. And now the coup de gras, the most important function, save data. Of course, like I said before, this triggers once every floor and not once every frame because we're using the MC post curse evaluation. First of all, we get the player object and save it in the player variable. Then we use the function data, and this is done so we actually remember and load the data that was last saved. So for example, if you exited the game, you came back in, this is gonna get called immediately as you enter the floor on the first floor, the curse evaluation happens. And in the string value, we're gonna get how many coins we've had before. So for example, if you had five coins, this string value would now be five. And then I have another variable coins, which indicates how many coins we have in that situation. So what we do then, the first thing we check if this string is empty, or if it's zero, because if it's zero, there's no point, because that means that we've just started the run or that we've just basically done what we had to do. And in this case, of course, this is not foolproof because Judas, for example, starts out with three coins and maybe this is not the best way to go about things. But in this case, what I decided to do, if this string is empty or if it's zero, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get how many coin the player has and I'm gonna save it in the coins variable. So in Isaac's case, this would be zero, of course, and 
it, you can imagine this from the state that the save data just wouldn't have any value inside of it. So we need to assign some starting value to actually get going. But if this string, uh, if the loaded or the save data does have any value in it, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put the coins variable at the string value, which means that we would be keeping or persevering whatever was the last thing we saved. And when we do that, what we would do is just we would save our mod data and we would save how many coins we've had. And again, this is important in the sense because if it's the first time you start the run, you need to get how many coins the player has. But if it's maybe the fifth time you started the run, what we're doing is just getting how many coins the player has had previously. And then we're saving that mod data again. And then we just return curses to actually imply and start the curses. In the render data, what I do every single frame, which is again not the most optimal thing, but this is more of the sake of demonstration, we load the data every single frame, which is again not something you want to do. And what we do is we say Isaac load mod data mod, and then what this does is give us a string that we've saved with saved mod data. And I didn't really talk about what this does, but essentially what you do is you put the mod in, which indicates at which mod you're saving data, because you can have multiple mods enabled at the same time. And the second parameter is which string or which value you're actually saving. And in this case, we're just saving the number of coins. And when we do that, what we do is just load it back up again. And what this should load is how many coins we had before. Uh, and that should be it. You know, that, that, that at this point is it. We just assign it to debug text, the string, and then we just render it on the screen every single frame. So this should be it. So let's hop into the game. I'm going to show you that this actually works. Welcome to the game. And as you can see that the number now is zero, which means that we have zero coins under the last time we actually saved this particular run, we had zero coins. So what we have to do now is actually give ourselves some coins and go to the next floor. And theoretically, whatever coins we have on the second floor is the number that's going to persist when we actually come back and restart the game. So I'm just going to give myself seven coins. And I'm also going to enable debug 10, which is just quick kill, which should allow us to get to the boss much easier. So in this case, what I'm going to do is just I'm going to go to all the rooms, go to the bosses, go to the next room or the next floor. I'm going to restart the game. And then the number sh should be seven because we had seven coins when we left the floor. And this is actually something that's quite that, that's quite different to maybe what you're used to, because there really wasn't a way to keep track of how many coins or just how many things you have when you switch floors. But what should happen now, as we actually go to the next floor, the MC post curse evaluation is going to happen and we're going to save how many coins we had in that point in time. So in this case, you can see that the number of saved coins is seven. So if you go actually go back out of the game and go back into one and start a new run, that number should still be seven. And that should work even if you exit the game and maybe restart it or whatever. So let's go back into the notepad. I'm going to show you where you can see that this number is actually saved and that it's actually correct. Welcome back to text. And I just wanted to show you that this save file is actually visible and accessible to you. So if you go to your modding folder, you can see that when you save things, you get a new file called save dot dot. And if you open this in notepad plus plus or whichever editor you prefer, you can see that in there is whatever you saved throughout your mod. In this case, we saved seven, which means that when we next load this game and actually load this save that data file, the number is going to be seven. And of course, you can get much more intricate and complicated with this. You can save a bunch of things if you want. If you don't want people changing this, you can even encrypt the text. So of course, people can just change it willingly or basically you can do whatever you want with this. But this was just an example to show you how to save some custom things and then how to add some custom things. And of course, what you could do is save things like coins seven and then bombs eight and maybe keys nine or bosses killed three etc you know this file could be as long as you want it to be but the one thing you have to make sure you don't do is that you save it too frequently and that you don't save it too much so you don't want to save too much too frequently and now we're at the end of this video as well and I hopefully this was a bit educational. I'm sorry maybe that some things didn't really make a lot of sense just because this wasn't a typical demonstration video. It wasn't as hands-on as some of the other ones but I believe if you want to make some good mods and maybe some successful mods and some really great mods you will need at some point actually save the data from the previous run and then apply it on the next run. And you can see that the potential with this are just limitless. You can make achievements, you can make, you can keep track of progress of many, how many times the player has been hit, of how many times they've died. You can award them. You can essentially make a whole new Isaac experience just using this format. And of course, because there's a lot of string 
work and formatting, that's a bit annoying sometimes because if you want to make something really complicated, then maybe you need to find a way to separate strings, to add more things to it. And then of course you really have to be careful, like I said, three times throughout the video that you shouldn't save things too frequently or that the, the string that you're saving shouldn't be too long because that can be quite a taxing and a slow process and you usually don't want to do that especially if people have a lot of mods enabled or maybe if they have a slow computer this is this can really mess them up so with that said guys i hope you enjoyed this one and i hope to see you next time